YouTube, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to be doing a video that I've been talking about doing for a very long time. It is finally time that we upgrade Yuki by installing a Stage 3 caliber transmission MT82. Along with the transmission that we're gonna be installing, we're also gonna be upgrading our clutch to the lethal performance. This is like a 12, 100, 1000 horsepower clutch. Uh, I don't remember exactly which one it is. We're gonna be installing a new pilot bearing as well, a new slave cylinder or a throw up bearing, and some new ARP flywheel bolts. This is gonna be a very long and in-depth video, so if that's what you're looking for, then cool, stay around, stick around. If you want a quicker video, go ahead and check out one of these videos over here somewhere. Uh, when we install the Stage 2 MT82 on Casper, go ahead and check them out as well. Their link will be somewhere in the description. We're also gonna be installing an MGW shifter. This bad boy, I already kinda of put it together. This is gonna be replacing our Barton short throw shifter uh, that has some compatibility issues with the uh, caliber transmissions. Uh, first steps first is we're gonna go ahead and pull the car in, jack her up, which will probably take about an hour or so, um, and then we'll get back to it. Once you got the car pulled in, we're gonna go ahead and pop the hood so that we can disconnect the battery. Just disconnect the negative. Now, if you had your stock car and you didn't have a giant supercharger on there, I would say that we go ahead and take off the top two transmission bolts from here. However, I have a bunch of cooling lines and whatnot that kind of interferes there. So I'm gonna attempt a different way to take off those two bolts. Um, but if you didn't have that, there's gonna be two bolts right back here between the firewall and the back of your engine that you should be able to crush your hands back here and get those top two bolts. Um, but we're not gonna do that today. We're gonna try something else. Now that you've got her in the air, took about an hour and you're drenched in sweat, we're gonna start removing things and get into the transmission. First things first, the exhaust. All right, let's get on under. As I take bolts off, I took them all the way off and then I hand tighten them back on so that I don't lose them later. Because we're gonna have a lot of bolts going everywhere. So it kind of helps me stay organized, if you will. All right, so we're gonna slide our little C-clamps down towards our X-pipe here. As much as possible. Like that. And that'll allow us to yiggle these out. Like that. And then these should just Pop off. That's our X pipe out, easy day. Now that we've got the X pipe out, our next step is the actual drive shaft. This can be a little difficult, especially if you're doing it by yourself, because we need to lock the drive shaft in place. So I'm gonna recommend doing it from the rear diff first. That way we can put it in gear and have the E brake on at the same time. And for that, I think we need a 13. I went ahead and I put the transmission in gear. It doesn't matter which gear. And then I also pulled the E brake and we're gonna go ahead and knock some of these loose. Once you've gotten all the ones that you can reach, we're gonna just go ahead and pull it out of gear, take the e-brake off and rotate it and then do it the same thing. With all that, that's all the bolts in the rear. I will say though, if you have the aftermarket like one piece drive shaft, it will not be that easy because this is obviously not a three and a half inch drive shaft. The three and a half is gonna be naturally bigger, which will make it a little bit diff more difficult to get these bolts. But for the stock drive shaft, that was freaking easy. Over here, we've got our transmission side of our drive shaft here. These are gonna be 12 millimeter. There are 12 point sockets or our six point sockets like this one here uh, aren't, isn't gonna work for this one. So we've got our 12 here and we're just gonna pop it free like that. We'll go ahead and get this one down here too. That's two. Now we're gonna pull it out of gear and rotate. There's three. And there's four. With all that being done, we're just about ready to take the drive shaft off. We've got two bolts left and this U-clip right here or U-bracket or whatever that holds the, the center of the drive shaft up. So this side's a little difficult to get to. Uh, it, we've got the uh, E-brake that goes right through here. So the idea was I got the uh, 13 with a swivel socket on there or swivel extension thing. And then I was able to get it pretty easy. All right, she came out. All I did was, all I did was yank a little lot. She eventually came out super heavy, super not fun. Now that we've got all this out, we're gonna finally start working on the transmission. Just kidding, I lied. We're gonna go ahead and take the shifter out real quick. Should be pretty easy. You just pop this open, look at all your receipts that you don't need, and then uh, give it a good tug. Just like that. 
Don't need no panel poppers, plastic. No, just give it a good tug. We're gonna go ahead and uh, unscrew our little shift ball here and our little spacer thing. Off she comes, over she goes. Throw those out of there. Now on the premium, you've got two different connectors. You've got your electrical connector for your traction control, your hazards, and your trunk. And you've also got a connector for your lights that are, that are inside your cup holder. So just go ahead and give that a good unplug. I think it's just the green one right there. I lied, there's another one. We'll leave that there. And then your uh, actual connector's there. I'm gonna leave this one connected because we don't really need to touch it. Then we've got our actual shift boot here and uh, some electrical connections that are on our a key. Look at that. Some electrical connections that are on our actual bolts that we're gonna take off. We're just gonna tear that by accident and pull these up. Then you gotta take our shift boot off here. Give it a little wiggle and a tug. A tug and a wiggle. And it comes right up. Just like that, looks great. All right, then we've got our shifter here. There's four bolts that we have to disconnect from here. There's one here, one here, and one here, and one here. Three of them are gonna be really easy to get. The last one here is gonna be covered by our our car here. The way we're gonna get that is not by cutting a hole here. No, that doesn't make any sense. Instead, we're gonna go underneath and take out two bolts, which will lower our shift linkage in the entire thing so that we can get that last bolt. These are the two bolts that we're gonna get right here with the drive shaft out of the way. They're super easy to get, but you need a, a 10 millimeter deep. Now that we've taken those two bolts off, this should drop down considerably, allowing us to access that last bolt. So we'll go back up there and we'll take off those four bolts and then we'll come back down here. Once you get that last bolt off, she just comes right up. As easy as that. And now, that gives us plenty of freedom to move the transmission however we want and not have to worry about anything getting caught up here. The next thing to do before we can even start touching the transmission and whatnot would be to take off the starter. It's very cramped up there, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it. It's three bolts, and then you've got uh, two of the electrical connections on the actual starter solenoid. Uh, not too difficult. I'll, I'll let you guys see it once I've actually got it out, but that's our next step. So I'm gonna get to it real quick, and then we can start touching up the, uh, the bell housing bolts and make some real progress. All right, starter's out. This was a pain in the butt. This top bolt right here with a swivel socket uh, makes it a lot easier. It's still not that fun to get. As far as our electrical connection here, uh, we've got two that we had to take off. There's three bolts here, only two of them have uh, connections. This one right here, the big one over yonder, and the tiny one right here. So the one that's closest to the actual housing of the starter is one that you don't have to take off. All right, we're on day two. Uh, I got some help today. Hopefully he can uh, help this process go a lot quicker. I'm gonna go ahead and start putting the new shifter on our transmission while Kev knocks out our freaking uh, bell housing bolts. All right, now that we're down here, Kev's gonna knock out our, our bolts that attach the transmission to the engine. I think there's about nine of them, they're 13. The hardest bolts that are gonna be those top two bolts that I mentioned earlier. And we'll kind of get creative on those. So we've got our Calmer transmission here. Calmer transmissions are, they come painted, uh, the, so they look nice and pretty. It's gonna make our fitment a little bit uh, more of an issue, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and install our mounting bracket onto our transmission. Last time I installed one of these, we installed it while it was already up in the car. It made it a little bit tighter, just a little bit more difficult. Nothing crazy, but I'm gonna go ahead and attempt to install it out here to give you guys a better uh, view on it and to hopefully make it easier overall. So our, our first part right here, we're gonna reuse the exact same bolt that already came with our stock transmission, or if you're throwing the stock transmission back up there, it's just gonna fit nice and snug here. For me, very snug because of the paint. Then there's our little arms here. This is gonna add our extra stability. So these arms right here, um, the open ends are gonna snag on right here. Again, you got that paint there, so it might make it a little easier, or a little harder to go on there. And these bolts will line right back up. And then obviously we're just gonna tighten these down a little bit, and we do it on the other side real quick as well. And then of course we tighten these down and once we take the car, the transmission out all the way, I'm gonna go ahead and reuse that stock bolt for that hole right there. And the rest of it will probably be done, uh, the shifter portion of it will probably be done once it's actually up in the car. You get water up here, it drains down. Oh yeah? So basically my car is just peeing all over here. Yeah. It's on the car. Your transmission is water cooled. It's a whole shower down there. You freaking soaked, man. It's a whole shower it's thing. It's like <laughs> ripping so much right now. What, you don't want? Do you hear it? Watch that actually be fuel and we actually just can't smell anything because we don't have COVID. Alright, all we have left is a bolt up top. Let's just come right off. 
luckily we had some help come along and they can reach those top bolts that I could not. So we're just going to get them from the top. And then the transmission is ready to get off. That's right. Take this uh, thing off, of course. Now we take our transmission jack, support our transmission, and then we can take these off, right? Uh, actually, we should probably disconnect a yeah. lot of things. Uh, disconnect our electrical connections and whatnot before we snap them and break them. Why don't this one come off? Because there's, there's a... I mean, even this one doesn't want to come off. I mean, it helps nicely. The freaking... You did... You did... You know how to do it. The, your, uh, the, the throttle... The, throttle battery. The throttle body? What? <laughs> this man's tripping. <laughs> the throw out bearing. Throw out bearing? Yeah. Oh, okay. I know what you're talking about now. I am... I've been gone for too long. Oh my god. This man's gone for one week and he loses his mind. Last thing. That's the wrong way. These are 15s. These are 19s. Impact gun takes these out in two seconds. And she's out. Now, we drop the transmission. Alright, let's give her a nice little yiggle, yeah? Wait, we sure we got all the bolts? I got the two up top. Ah. Good. Oh, there it is. Oh, that was easy. It'll be separated. There we go. Pops right off. Talk about the easiest fucking transmission to come off ever. Okay, it goes. Just going inside my You're eye. the only one that's getting stuff in his eyes. Yeah. Now you can get the braided clutch line a lot braided. easier. Braided? Or, I mean, the, braided. the not braided clutch line a lot easier. Did you get it? Yeah, nothing's leaking. Oh, but jack of the end. Well, a little more detail than that. Oh. I might use this piece of wood to jack of the end. Why are we doing that? To get more space for the transmission. Oh, to get more space for the transmission to fall. I don't know how to explain it. Good enough for government work. Jack and some lock. Jack. Yep. Jacking up. Jacking up. Jacking up. I really hate wiring harnesses. Like, truth be told, they're not my fan. Yeah, why can't we make, why can't we make everything Bluetooth? <laughs> what? <laughs> everything Bluetooth. Everything Bluetooth. Oh. Down. Woo! I hate transmissions so much. So now we have the old transmission out. We're gonna put the new transmission in. There's a few things that we have to swap over. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and do that real quick and then we'll throw this one back in after we do the clutch. I'm like, oh, there's it, there's it. <laughs> when I tie stuff, it's probably good. When you tie stuff, <laughs> it's just like, oh, I angry to it. It should never come. It's like, this is never backing out, <laughs> ever. Come yeah, on. you don't need Loctite if you just <laughs> weld it on there with the strength of fucking over tightening it. Now we gotta take off the old clutch, clutch plate, pressure plate, flywheel, with an impact. <clears throat> Uh, there's a specific way that I like to go about these clutches. These clutches have a specific order in the spacing and the in the washers that they that they require. So what I like to do is I like to keep them exactly like that. Um, sometimes it's, it's a, probably a little more than what you actually have to do, but it works for me. It helps me stay organized, and in a bigger project, organization is key. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what I do, and uh, you guys can be the judge of whatever the heck you do. Clutch already comes with an alignment mark. Basically the flywheel, the floater plate, and the top pressure plate all have to be in this alignment mark. However, what I like to do is I'll take my little handy dandy paint pen and I'll mark the top of a bolt and I'll mark a, uh, a nut there. That gives me a starting point because we already talked about how particular things have to be in a certain order to, to make sure we have the same height and everywhere. But this gives me like a reference point in my mind to say, okay, that's my starting point. That's my starting bolt. I'm gonna go ahead and take this off without smearing the paint, hopefully. And so I'll set that one there. And as I take off the washer, the locking washer and the other washer, 
I will set it in the appropriate order that it came off, all next to each other. That way when I do this one, and I take off the locking washer and the washer, it's in that order. And so I'm just gonna go around in the counterclockwise order and put them in respect to the actual bolt that they come off of. All right, so now that I've taken off every single uh, nut, and I know that this one's our painted nut, and it's got a painted uh, stud here, and each nut goes with its corresponding bolt, we can go ahead and take off our pressure plate and flip her over and throw her somewhere else. And now we've got our actual clutch disc here. On our clutch disc itself, you can see that it says top. This one's obviously the top disc. There's two discs on this one, right? Boom, that one says bottom. Uh, on the flip side of this though, it says flywheel side. Yours might say engine side or something of the sort, but your flywheel and the engine are both in the same direction, so yeah. Now we've got our floater plate here, and before we go any further, one thing I did forget was that we're gonna go ahead and put our, our hardware back on. As soon as you take off that top pressure plate, then you can go ahead and put the, this hardware back on in the same order that it came from. So our washer and our locking washer, and we got our painted nut here and our painted bolt. I said that backwards, but we're gonna go ahead and thread it on. That keeps our spacers and our, our whatnot, keep it there as uh, when we go to put it back on the engine that nothing falls off. I'm gonna go ahead and do that for all the other ones. Our floater plate here, we're gonna do the exact same thing we did with our pressure plate for our floater plate. Take my marker, my handy dandy marker, make a mark, make a mark, and I know that that is my starting point. There's only three here, so it's kinda hard to mess this one up compared to the uh, pressure plate having six. Last one off, our floater plate comes up like that. And then we'll uh, go ahead and throw our locking nut and our, our locking washer and our nut back on. And with that done, we've got our bottom plate that can now get out of the way. This one also says flywheel side on the other side, so. Now you don't necessarily have to be too uh, cautious of like touching our, our surface areas here. We're gonna wash them in a second anyways. Uh, you know, if you, got, if you got like tons of oil on your hand, I'd probably advise against that part, but you know, for the most part, you're, you're probably fine. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and open up our nice little Flywheel bolts here, these are expensive. <sighs> it better be worth it. Yeah, it doesn't say the fucking torque spec, huh? It tells you the weight of the package, though. It doesn't tell you the torque spec. I'm so glad I know that now. <laughs> that this is 0. .6 pounds. Our flywheel goes up, and that's why we put all the, the nuts on, so that our hardware doesn't fly everywhere. Once it's on, you can rotate it. There's a specific way that it has to go on, so if it's not on in the right way, not all the bolts will go in all the way. You'll just rotate it until it looks like literally every freaking hole is lined up perfectly. Once it is, you should be able to thread some bolts in without any difficulty. If it gets difficult to tighten, then you're not lined up properly. Um, it should go in pretty freaking easy. Went ahead and found our correct positioning here. I put one bolt in there just to hold it up there so it doesn't fall on my face. Uh, all the other bolts, and then eventually that bolt as well, are gonna get some blue Loctite on the threads here. And then the ARP flywheel bolts comes with a, a lubricant that we're gonna put on the back side of the head. All right, now that we got all of our flywheel bolts in, we're gonna go ahead and torque them down. For ARP specifically, they say that they want 70 foot pound inches of torque. Um, I believe the, the stock flywheel bolts are roughly between 50 or 60 or somewhere around there. For ARP, they say 70. So we're going to go ahead and torque it down to 70 foot poundages. I'm going to use my torque thing with jigger over here, and then someone's going to go ahead and hold the uh, the crankshaft for us real quick. I think, I think it's a 19 or something like that, and uh, and that'll keep it from rotating as I as I torque down here. Now that we went ahead and tightened this up to 70 foot poundages of torque. We have to clean this because oftentimes these are shipped with some oils and whatnot to prevent rusting and what not nots. So we're gonna clean this up with some brake cleaner and a rag. Now that we've got it all clean, we're gonna take our bottom one, the flywheel side facing the flywheel, and stick it on into the pilot bearing. And stick it flush just like that. Now that this is done, we're gonna go ahead and take off our floater uh, floater plate hardware. It's just the, the actual nut and the locking washer. And I like to set these in the specific order that they came off, so I put them exactly how they came off. Back on. Now that we've taken the hardware off, there's a few things that we have to do before we put the floater plate on. Is one, we have to match up the lines with the line here and the line on the flywheel. But also we have to clean both sides of this. Both sides of this will make contact with the pressure plate, so we wanna make sure there's no oils or whatnot on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean it real quick. With the flywheel side of the floater plate cleaned and the top alignment marks lined up there, I'm gonna go ahead and put the hardware back on, our locking nut, 
our locking washer, and our nut. With all of these hand tightened, we're gonna go ahead and tighten these down to 25 foot pounds of torque. Your clutch might be a little different, but from my experience, the floater plate's pretty much always 25 foot pounds of torque. So when you go to tighten these down to 25 foot pounds of torque, uh, you don't really have to do a crisscross passment. There's only three of them, so it doesn't really matter. You can't mess this part up. 25 foot pounds of torque, pound feet of torque. With these three bolts tightened in, uh, we're gonna put our alignment tool back in and our bottom clutch should spin freely like this. There is a allowance of how much play you could have about here. Uh, it's between 0 0.02 and 0 0.025. So a little bit of play is fine, but you don't wanna go crazy on that and it should allow it to just spin like that. Uh, with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and put our, or I'll, clean, I'll clean this side again and then we'll put our top one on and then we'll put our pressure plate on after taking off these bolts, all right? Cause they won't go on without taking these bolts off. That makes sense. Top pl top pressure plates on or top clutch disc is on. Uh, removed all the hardware, have this alignment tool in there. The pressure plate will slide right, right over that so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, but it is heavy. So I'm gonna try to record this with no hands. Ooh, where's the alignment mark? There it is. All right, now that we've got these all hand tight, these are 14s, I think, and we're gonna tighten down to 35 pound-feet of torquages. New clutch installed. The next step is actually put the transmission back in. Uh, this is probably the hardest part. Uh, you think you got about an hour left, and it's gonna turn into one week. We're not actually gonna record all the, the different parts of it. It's mainly just playing with the rotation of the transmission, the angle of the transmission, and then if that's not doing it, the angle of the engine as well to give you that little bit of extra play similar to how we did when we were taking the transmission out. It's not entirely advised to use the transmission bolts to pull the transmission to the engine. So what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna put the bolts in as kind of a guide to help us line it up better. Um, there's already dowels on the engine that'll go into these two holes right here. The dowels will go into these holes and help us line it up. That's why these are slightly bigger and that'll help us you know, get it in the right thing majigger. It's hard to get a good shot with everything that's going on, the lack of light tight angles, so that's kind of what we're gonna be doing. You already got your, your new shift mount uh, and linkage for your new sh shifter. If you're using one of those, if you're using the stock one, then you've already got you know that. You've swapped out the fluid here if you needed to, or you filled it up in our case. But yeah, here goes the, the hardest part, I'd say. Our transmission is now in, uh, barely. It's probably about an inch or so away from the, the actual engine uh, at this point. We have two bolts holding it in. Uh, while the transmission is still down, it gives us a little bit more room to, to work with our shifter here. So we're gonna go ahead and install the shifter, or attempt to, uh, which means one thing we should have done before the, we put the transmission up there was cut our dynamat and put it on the top of our uh, little bracket, or bridge as they call it. So we're gonna go ahead and do that, do a little cut. So the, uh, what you're supposed to do with the rest of it is you're supposed to wrap up the bottom of our shifter here. However, we have a lot left over. So we're gonna do some more arts and crafts and, uh, and cut some of the excess. Finish tightening up these bolts and then our transmission will be beautiful. It'll be perfect. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and put our rear transmission mount thing that goes across the rear. And then our transmission will no longer need this jack. Uh, if you haven't already, now would be a good time to go ahead and put your um, your clutch line into your little thing from over here. If you have the stock clutch line, it's super easy. It kind of falls into place. You can click the click, click. That's it. Easy day. I just did mine by accident. Our transmission, she's in there. She's not coming out. Uh, the next thing would be our shifter here. Now that we finally got the placement right, so we went ahead and slid the uh, our shifter down through the top here. Slides right onto the top here, and then the bottom goes in as well. I'll just go ahead and show you that from underneath, but up here, we're done from up here. Just kind of angle it sideways and push it in and it slides right on. And then we'll go underneath. Once we're down here, we have our three bolts here. Two of them are the exact same size. One is different. The, the, one, is, uh, the one that is smaller is gonna go on the actual shift linkage. The other two are gonna go on the mount or the bridge as they call it. I've got my blue thread lock here. We're just gonna apply a few dabs to it uh, to prevent it from shaking out from vehicle vibration. And then this one will go to the shift linkage portion of it, right about, this needs to come out. There you go. She was shifted in gear for a second. All right, so that's hand tighten real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and put some Loctite on our other two bolts. And this one goes into our bridge right up here. 
she ain't coming out. Now that uh, now that we have our new shifter in, uh, of course that's if you're installing the MGW. If you're not, and you're just using your stock shifter, then that wasn't very helpful for you. But at this point, everything that you're gonna do is basically what you've already done in reverse. So we're gonna install the starter, we're gonna install our drive shaft, we're gonna reinstall our mid pipe, um, and then I'll see you back when we're about to pump up the clutch because that's a little different. But everything else is gonna be the same. Pretty easy. If you've gotten this far, the rest of it's easy. Piece of cake. Peace piece of cake. All right, while we have everything else put back together, there's one final step before we can start her up and see if everything works and uh, that all of our hard effort was for naught. And that's to top off our master cylinder up here or a brake reservoir as it has slowly dripped out as we were installing everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and top it off maybe right below our max right quick. Uh, and then I'm going to go back into the car and pump the clutch pedal probably about 3,000 times to get, you know, the pressure built up and get the air out of the system. You don't have traction. <sighs> I'm going to bed. I'm going to bed. I'm tired. It's been a long time. Been a long it long works. Long. It does, yeah. You, you did all this work. All this work. Three days worth of work. You, two camera batteries died. You're sweaty. You, you stuff. And it works for a try. That's, you don't get any better than that. That's like textbook. And then we start it up tomorrow, it doesn't work. <laughs> 